What does a year of improvement bring? Let's find out. Hello guys, so in this video I'm going to be doing a Draw This Again to Fearless. And for those who don't know, Fearless was the Draw This Again piece that I did in November of 2017 and it was a six year improvement gap that I was trying to bridge. And that video blew up out of nowhere. I had no idea that it would do that well. I wasn't expecting it to do that well. I know I've got a lot of new subscribers from that video in the past year. So if you have subscribed from the original video, I want to welcome you to my channel and I hope you like it. If you haven't watched the 2017 version, I will leave a link to it in the iCard and the description down below so you can watch it and then see how I've improved, if I've improved. I think I've improved. I hope you think so too. For ways to improve, I actually went to my Instagram and I actually asked on an Instagram story for people to suggest ways in which I could improve upon the 2017 version and quite a lot of people actually commented and I thank you if you replied to that story. I always turn to my Instagram whenever I need help with something and you guys are just amazing and you help me. So if you would like to help me in future videos, you can follow my Instagram at Snowy Mariner. I post all my art there and it is my most active social media account. For those who don't know the origin story of this piece, my 2011 piece was based off a photo from Taylor Swift's lyric book of her second album, Fearless. Fearless's lyric book actually was really, really pretty. It had so many beautiful photos that I just wanted to redraw myself. And that's what the 2011 14 year old Zoe did. I was a huge fan of Taylor Swift back then. I do still listen to her music from time to time. It's still really good. It's just, I don't listen to it as often. So the sketching process was really interesting because I actually decided to sketch this whole thing out twice. The reason why I did that is because after finishing the first sketch, I thought to myself, this looks a bit flat. This just does not look as good as I wanted it to. And usually when you have a sloppy foundation, you're going to have a sloppy final piece. So I just wanted to re-sketch it out again, just to see if it would fare any better. I knew doing a second sketch would add more time to this process, but I really wanted it to be right. And the sketches look almost identical, so it was almost like, yeah, there was no point in sketching it out again, but I feel like the second one followed a line of action more. As you can see, the main thing that was changed was the angle of the character. I wanted to change the angle because I thought it would add a lot more depth and dimension to the picture and lo and behold it did which I was so happy about. The pose is kind of taken from the 2017 version, obviously the originals that were there, but also from Inktober Day 10 that I did and that's why I took the head from that picture just so I could make sure I was doing it right. The best part about this piece was definitely the background for me. When doing the background, I found it a lot of fun to try and replicate the shadows and the lighting that was happening. And I actually decided to change the size of the picture because one of the things that bugged me about the 2017 version is that because of the A4 size, it was very much crammed in like I was trying to cram in so much of the details and didn't leave room for it to breathe and it just feels so overwhelming I think giving that space in the artwork is definitely something that makes the image just feel more dynamic and more able to have a sense of depth it can be quite the effective technique to leave space and that technique is called negative space which is really, really helpful to let a piece of artwork breathe when used properly and effectively. The biggest complaint people had last year was that the face looked really weird and it just did not match at all with the style that I was trying to do. And I think 
part of that was due to the angle of the head. Now, I obviously didn't want too high of an angle that it was just too hard for me to do. Here is where the struggles set in for me with this year's piece. I did so many attempts at the head. I moved around the eyes. I made them bigger, smaller. I also moved around the nose two or three times. I even moved around the mouth a couple of times as well. And I just could not get it right. And I think I got it to a point where it looked good enough for me to be happy with it. So don't get me started about the hands. The hands in this piece were very hit or miss right from the get-go. So first of all, when I was sketching them out in the original sketch, I really liked them. They were great. I thought I got the proportions right. They just looked really good. But when I started adding colour and blending, that is where it all went downhill. This is something that a lot of my digital pieces has had a problem with in the past, is that I can't get the hands right even when trying to add colour or do blending or anything like that. But I tried to work it up to a stage where I actually thought, yeah, this looks good. And a lot of the times through the process of doing this artwork, I did leave my computer and then come back. So I came back with a fresh set of eyes and it really helped me to pinpoint the things I did not like and fix them. This goes with the face as well because this whole same process of not liking how the face was turning out was also a thing. Originally, I wasn't really planning to do a redraw of Fearless because Fearless was one of those ones where I'd done it and there was so much improvement on the last one. It was kind of a situation where you're just thinking, how am I going to improve on this? Hmm, it's, it's going to be difficult. So in terms of the style of this, it's definitely more character driven, but there is an emphasis on a painterly style. Usually painterly style in digital art is usually seen with realistic stuff. Now I'm kind of blending a cartoony-esque painterly style, which is okay. I feel like this style would work better with line art and you can see that there still is a little bit of line art intact in places, but it's not as jarring as it was in 2017's piece. Now I am not a digital art master like my friends Jenna Drawing or Canary Witch. I'm way more of a traditional artist who likes to do digital art on the side. So I do know when I start commissions, I dare say it's mainly gonna be traditional ones, but I think I wanna develop my digital style more. So maybe doing digital commissions could be a thing as well. I don't know. I'm still in the process of trying to sort it all out. So I will admit that this video is pretty late. It's because the weekend that this was meant to go up, I had some commitments on the Saturday and on the Sunday, it was the first anniversary of my granddad passing away. So I didn't really want to post to social media or do anything because I was just remembering him. And even though I've improved on the 2017 version. I still hold the 2017 version very highly because it was the piece that I worked on just before he passed away. So I can completely understand if people prefer the 2017 version over this one. I dare say there will be some people in the comments that think I haven't improved or I've taken a back step, but just remember that improvement is not going to be a straight line. It is going to be a squiggly line. And to be honest, every person is different and that line can be incredibly squiggly going up and down and being a completely bumpy ride. And then other people's line of improvement could be less bumpy of a ride. Also, when it comes to improvement, I tend to focus on different areas every time. So some areas can become rusty and then others can actually be more improved than the last time. For a quick example, I have not focused on hands and I can really tell because the hands aren't very great in this. So maybe that's something to focus on for next year. I personally believe my style is currently in the process of changing, especially from painterly. So the last two digital pieces that I've done, which was this one 
and the Spyro piece of Autumn Plains that I did to celebrate the Reignited Trilogy coming out. I feel like it was so much harder than it used to be to do them because I was trying to emulate a part of my style that had kind of disappeared over time, if you know what I'm saying. It's really hard to explain it and I don't know how to, but I'm trying to do it in the best way possible. So I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. I know my friend Jenna actually said something very similar in her recent Draw This Again video, that her style was going in a different direction. And I agree with my own style doing that as well. To the younger members of my audience that are still currently watching to this point in the video, I want to say, that you never stop improving. Yes, the road might be a very bumpy one to your improvement, but don't let that stop you. The whole reason why I kept the second sketch process in this video is to show you that not everything you do will be perfect. And even at the age of 21, I am still improving, learning new things and will continue to improve into the future. And the reason why I've said that is because even myself, when I have art block, I forget that fact and my mindset becomes very closed on this is my final piece, this is how I'm going to be, but that's not the case. There's always room for improvement if you're willing to try. If you feel like you've hit a wall with your artwork, maybe try something new. We're reaching the end of the video and as always, if you liked this video, please like, and if you would like to catch any more content that I create in the future, please subscribe with notifications on. Hopefully YouTube works. Uh, this is for my uploads and for my live streams whenever I decide to live stream. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys!